So let's study about the chapter fetal skull and uh, maternal pelvis. First we'll deal with the fetal skull, then we'll deal with the maternal pelvis. And the fetal skull is made up of thin flat bones uh, which are called as the vault, uh, vault bones and these rest on the uh, rigid and incompressible bones of the, um, at the base of the skull. Coming to the areas of the skull, the area of the skull can be divided into uh, many parts and um, in that uh, the cranial vault can be divided into three parts particularly that will be the vertex, uh, brow and then the face. Uh, vertex is an area, first remember that the vertex is a quadrangular area which will be extending anteriorly um, uh, till the um, extending anteriorly till the uh, brachma and the coronal sutures laterally on the uh, uh, parietal promin eminence and then posteriorly by the lambda and the lambda sutures brow is an area which is uh, which from one side it is going to be from the bregma and the coronal sutures and uh, on the other side that is uh, downwards it will be uh, till the uh, root of the nose and the supra orbital margins of either side of the eye uh, coming to the next one that will be the face. Face will be extending from the root of the nose and the supraorbital margins till the um, junction between the floor of the mouth and the neck. Uh, coming to the uh, sinciput and occiput, these are also, please remember that sinciput and occiput are not specific points, they are areas. Sinciput is the area of the brow region, while the um, uh, occiput is the area of the occipital bone region. And uh, there are two important uh, uh, things that is the sutures and the fontanelles are the two important um, uh, terms which we need to master about in the uh, and are of obstetrical importance uh, coming to the sutures there are basically um, uh, sagittal sutures are present coronal sutures, sutures are present lambdoidal sutures as well as frontal sutures are also seen in some cases um, the importance of all these four sutures is that uh, they help in four important functions the first is in the gliding movement this gliding movement will be needed uh, particularly during the molding of the head so gliding movement uh, facilitates in uh, overlapping of the um, overlapping of the bone so that uh, the fetal skull can pass through the uh, uh, through the birth canal during the molding of the head as well as during the internal rotation so this gliding movement gives rise to the internal rotation as well as to the molding uh, molding of the head and um, by uh, by internal examination if you uh, can see the uh, vault of the uh, vault of the skull it can give you an idea of the manner of the engagement of the head how it will give because by uh, by seeing the um, uh, level of the occiput and the sinciput you can easily uh, predict uh, about the type of the engagement as well uh, in about the engagement as well as the type of engagement that is whether there is um, uh, syncletism or uh, asyncletism also you can so coming with the concepts of fontanelles what do you mean by fontanel means fontanel is just a gap in the um, uh, suture line is called as the fontanel there are six fontanels in the body but uh, two are very important uh, for obstetrics the first one is the anterior or also called as the pragmatic fontanel as well as the uh, posterior fontanel also called as the lambda uh, anterior fontanel also called as the bregma first we'll study about its boundaries then then the shape of it then what is covering its floor and when it gets ossified so these are the four important things then finally importance of this fontanel five things we need to study about each fontanel so let us study about uh, first is the boundary uh, the boundary in the anteriorly it has a frontal suture which is present in some cases and uh, laterally there is coronal suture and posteriorly sagittal suture is present uh, since it is made by these three types of um, uh, suture so it will form a diamond shaped uh, fontanel that is a diamond shaped gap will be formed in between all these sutures okay at the meeting point of all these sutures a diamond shaped gap will be formed and that is called as an anterior fontanel and it is uh, a membranous uh, having a membranous floor and it will ossify at uh, 18 months 18 months means one and a half years uh, after birth it will get ossified and if it gets even ossified after uh, if it gets ossified after two years then it is a abnormal case coming to the importance this is a very important fontanel because um, the internal examination of this uh, uh, fontanel uh, can uh, tell about the intracranial status it tells 
details about the molding that is the syncletism as well as asyncletism also can be uh, uh, investigated by this fontanelle as well as the degree of flexion can also be uh, told by this uh, um, anterior examining the anterior fontanelle uh, so uh, in case of emergency if we need some blood um, uh, of the fetus we can collect it from here in case of exchange transfusions as well as in case if you want the CSF uh, to be uh, withdrawal can also be done from this side coming to the posterior fontanelle uh, the boundaries are here it is anteriorly um, there is sagittal suture laterally there is a lambdoid suture the shape of it is of course it is triangular and uh, floor is membranous only but uh, by the time uh, of birth at the term pregnancy it will become a bony uh, structure so therefore to call it as a fontanel it is not a true fontanel so uh, the term fontanel uh, is just a um, misnomer in case of the posterior fontanel okay the importance of it is that it helps in determining the position of the head in relation to the maternal pelvis coming to various diameters of the skull the first is the very important most diameter that is the suboccipital bremic diameter it is 9.5 cm suboccipital frontal sof is 10 cm and uh, the occipital frontal diameter is 11.5 cm uh, mento vertical diameter is 14 cm submento vertical diameter is 11.5 cm and sub mento bremic diameter is 9.5 cm remember that the suboccipital bregmatic uh, bre not bremic it is a suboccipital pragmatic diameter extends from the as the terms itself is saying it extends from the suboccipital region to the bregma that is suboccipital region we can approximately consider it to be the nape of the neck nape from the nape of the neck uh, to the um, uh, to the bregma will be representing the suboccipital bremic di pragmatic diameter sof is the suboccipital frontal diameter frontal here uh, represents the anterior end of the anterior end of the uh, anterior uh, fontanel or the center of the sinciput is called as the uh, is represented by f over here and occipital frontal is from the uh, uh, from the occipital uh, protuberance to the frontal eminence which is formed by the sinciput uh, I'm, I'm sorry uh, it is not formed by the uh, uh, sinciput here but here the f is formed by the glabella the, or the root of the nose mento vertical diameter it extends from the mentum that is from the uh, center of the chin to the vertex vertex is the highest point on the sagittal suture sub mento vertical is a uh, point from the uh, sub mentum that is at the uh, floor of the mouth uh, center of the floor of the mouth to the vertex and sub mento pragmatic of course you know that coming to the next thing that is remember that in case of vertex uh, present if the presenting part is a vertex in cephalic presentation then then all these sob sof and of um, are acting as the um, uh, diameters of the uh, vertex presentation in bro presentation we measure the uh, mento vertical diameter in case of face presentation we measure the sub mento vertical as well as sub mento pragmatic uh, diameters um, in case of the complete flexion of the head, if the head is completely flexed, then the engaging diameter of this uh, completely flexed head will be SOB. Uh, the in, in case of incomplete flexion, the engaging diameter is SOF. In that way, you have to go. Um, better to remember the same uh, sequence of, uh, in which I have written so that it becomes easier to remember by the visual memory. Coming to the next one, that will be the biparietal diameter will be measuring a 9.5 centimeter it is the distance between the two parietal eminences and super sub parietal diameter is uh, 8.5 centimeter uh, remember that super parietal and sub parietal super parietal is a point uh, just above the uh, um, and just above the uh, parietal eminence of one side and uh, the uh, parietal uh, sub parietal is a point uh, uh, which is um, be, just below the parietal eminence of the other side and the distance between these two will be called as the sub super sub parietal diameter which will be 8.5 and uh, 
uh, by per uh, temporal diameter is the distance uh, on either side of the anterior inferior ends of the coronal sutures uh, while the by mastoid diameter is uh, the distance between the uh, tip of the mastoid processes remember that here it is 9.5 cm by parietal diameter uh, as well as the smb as well as sob all of these are having same 9.5 cm only and remember that the mento vertical sub mento vertical diameter and sof uh, i mean uh, of uh, of as well as smb both of them have same diameters of 11.5 centimeters uh, mento vertical is the maximum diameter uh, uh, which is 14 centimeters and uh, so sof is just half centimeter greater than the sub occipital pragmatic one okay and uh, remember that biparietal diameter is 9.5 just reduce it by one that will become 8.5 uh, just reduce by 0 0.5 0 0.5 reduce reduction should be done here Coming to the circumferences, there are four circumferences in that the most important one is the circumference uh, at the uh, complete flexion which is the uh, most commonest one uh, where we will measure the biparietal uh, suboccipital bremic uh, pragmatic um, plane of engagement yeah. well, uh, and this will be usually 11 inches which is, um, uh, which is equal to 27.5 uh, centimeters. And uh, in the flexed uh, attitude, uh, the circumference will be 13 and a half inches. In incomplete extension, the, uh, the circumference is 15 inches. Or in complete extension, 11 inches will be seen. Coming to the next concept that is called as the molding. Molding is uh, also called as the fitting. Um, uh, it's not called as a fitting, but uh, you can better understand it by uh, the term fitting. And usually, uh, the molding is uh, the alteration in the shape of the forecoming head to pass through the uh, resistant birth canal at the labor. And remember that the molding or the alteration in the shape of this uh, head will be maximally 4 millimeter, not more than that. Uh, here the parietal bones will overlap uh, with other uh, bones uh, to get molded to get molded or to get uh, uh, to get adjusted to pass through the uh, uh, birth passage uh, in the first vertex position also called as the left occipital anterior position of the head with respect to maternal pelvis and the right parietal bone will always uh, override, uh, override the left parietal bone and uh, in ROA that is in the right occipital anterior position of the fetal head with respect to maternal pelvis also called as the second vertex position and the left parietal bone will over uh, right the right parietal bone uh, coming to the grading uh, the grade one is uh, where there is no overlap but only just touching of the parietal two parietal bones take place in grade two there is overlapping along with that um, uh, the parietal bones will not be uh, fixed but they will be separate uh, while well, in grade 3, they both will overlap as well as they remain fixed also. The importance of molding is that it helps, uh, it is very important for the passage of the uh, fetus through the uh, birth canal and this uh, molding uh, will disappear a few hours after birth and if a uh, small amount of molding up till uh, 4 millimeters uh, will uh, will, will be normal but excess molding will lead to tearing of the tentorium cerebelli and uh, it might even lead to subdural hemorrhages also coming to the next thing that is the caput succedaneum caput succedaneum is simply a swelling of the uh, head due to the stagnation of the fluid at the layers of the scalp due to the membranous rupture in the scalp it is a temporary uh, swelling which will get disappeared later after the birth uh, it might uh, get confused to cephalhematoma which is a pathological condition but caput succedaneum is a physiological condition caused due to the swelling due to the stagnation of fluid at the layers of scalp So the figure 9.5 A to D will show the type of molding in cephalic presentation uh, the dotted uh, lines uh, which is shown by the dotted line remember that uh, this is the uh, the, uh, the this is the engaging diameters uh, 
these are all the engaging diameter it is the engaging diameter in the uh, well flexed head it is the engaging diameter uh, with the deflexed head also called as a sugar loaf head it is called as this is the engaging diameter of face presentation this is the engaging diameter of the bro presentation wherein uh, you can see the mold due to molding the um, uh, shape alteration will be like this the shape alterations will become like this in this case it will become like this so um, the part which is uh, covered by the engaging diameter uh, toward this side it will get expanded here it will be extended towards this side and here little bit this side it will get expanded and here it will be little bit like this it will get expanded so now let us go with the uh, maternal pelvis and the maternal pelvis can be divided into three parts that is false pelvis uh, pelvic brim as well as the true pelvis before going into details of all that so let us uh, remember that uh, this pelvis is formed by um, um, by the uh, two innominate bones as well as one sacrum and coccyx uh, so therefore there are four bones totally uh, not f uh, yeah four bones totally involved here but remember that uh, sacrum is formed by uh, five pieces uh, which have got fused together uh, to form a single bone and even the coccyx also um, uh, coming to the false pelvis false pelvis is made up of the iliac portions of the innominate or hip bones only the iliac part of the hip bone will be forming the uh, false pelvis only the iliac part of the hip bones only the iliac part of the hip bone uh, portions of the hip bone will form the uh, false pelvis while the uh, true pelvis is formed by the uh, true pelvis actually forms the birth canal okay so this is called as the true pelvis uh, and this ring in between this um, uh, white and this dark blue ring in between will form the pelvic brim this pelvic brim is formed by the following structures the in the Center. it will be from the medial uh, from the median towards the lateral side will be the pubic symphysis then comes the pubic crest pubic tubercle then pectineal line uh, iliopubic eminence and once again uh, the iliopectineal line then finally the sacroiliac articulation and ala of the sacrum and finally the promontory of the sacrum will be there uh, so this is about the pelvic brim so we have discussed about the uh, false pelvis we discussed about the pelvic brim now let's go with the true pelvis true pelvis is the canal through which the fetus passes and it is 4 cm in the anteriorly formed by the subic symphysis and 11.5 cm or 4.5 inches uh, posteriorly formed by the sacrum and the uh, coccyx uh, remember that the uh, true pelvis is of the most uh, is of utmost importance to the obstetrics while the uh, false pelvis has uh, no much importance uh, just it has the um, bearing a weight bearing uh, function only and is of uh, not much uh, obstetrical importance the true pelvis is divided into three parts that is inlet cavity and outlet so coming with the inlet uh, so the pelvis can be of four types uh, it will be usually gynecoid in case of females android uh, in case of males platypeloid and anthropoids are also seen uh, gynecoid is a round shaped pelvis while the android is a heart shaped pelvis and um, uh, coming to the inclination of the pelvis inclination uh, is the angle um, uh, angle which the pelvis makes um, remember that uh, first uh, to hold the pelvis in anatomical position uh, to hold the pelvis in anatomical position you must hold it in such a way that ASIS that is anterior superior iliac spine as well as the uh, upper border of the pubic symphysis should lie in the same uh, vertical plane and uh, on holding like that uh, the angle formed um, uh, will be the angle formed um, between the horizontal pl uh, plane and uh, the uh, point connecting the uh, and the true conjugate and the point connecting the true conjugate will be 55 degrees and that is called as the inclination angle what is true conjugate i'll tell you a little bit later uh, the uh, to, uh, coming to the next thing that is uh, the sacralization of the uh, L5 and lumbarization of the S1 also called as low inclination L for L and S for H. A high, inclin high inclination is if the angle is be has become greater than 55 degree. Suppose if the angle becomes greater than 55 degree then the hip becomes more prominent in such, uh, such women and uh, the, in such a case there will be delayed engagement of head um, for, as 
as well as uh, difficulty in the descent usually the cesarean section will be the most common uh, method of uh, delivering the baby uh, but in lumbarization if uh, there is lumbarization of the s1 vertebra or if there is low inclination of the uh, pelvis then uh, there won't be much uh, difficulties it would be just almost normal only coming to the axis the axis also called as the curve of carus will be directed down uh, downwards as well as it will be directed backward also coming to the sacral angle the sacral angle is the angle formed uh, between the uh, between the true conjugate as well as the uh, first two pieces of the sacrum and this angle remember this is a right angle or 90 degree angle coming to the next one that is the diameters of the um, uh, maternal pelvis you need to remember so there are three diameters anterior posterior diameters can be uh, in the indent there are uh, three anterior posterior di diameters the first is called as a true conjugate this is called as obstetric conjugate this is called as the diagonal conjugate the, it extends from the um, it extends uh, from the sacral promontory to the upper end of the outer border of the uh, upper uh, upper border of the outer um, outer outer border of the uh, pubic symphysis this one will extend towards the middle of the pubic symphysis or inner part of the uh, pubic symphysis or the upper uh, upper upper border and uh, this uh, diagonal conjugate will extend uh, to the lower part of the pubic symphysis okay and uh, the diameters are very important that is true conjugate measures 11 centimeter oc represent 10 centimeter remember here there is o and here there is a zero so that's why it should be 10 centimeter and uh, diagonal conjugate is the maximum diameter which will be 12 centimeter so this should be a uh, unit to by heart for this you just remember that there should be uh, zero and o and the remaining one will be the middle value that is 11 centimeters and then uh, the only um, uh, diameter that can be measured is the diagonal uh, conjugate which is measured in this way here uh, the uh, the tip of the finger will be touching the um, uh, sacral promontory with a difficulty and this point uh, uh, from the other finger uh, from the other finger should be noted and this distance will represent the diagonal conjugate so talking about the place where uh, the inlet cavity and outlet are uh, the inlet is formed um, by the pelvic brims uh, bony landmarks um, and uh, the cavity is formed or also called as this cavity is also called as the plane of the greatest pelvic dimension it is um, it has uh, above it and the inlet and below it there is presence of a plane of uh, least dimensions or also called as the outlet the outlet is having above uh, the plane of least di uh, pelvic dimensions while below it has the anatomical outlet um, and then uh, one more uh, the uh, then coming to the next one is the diameters which are the most important uh, for the diameters uh, the this diagram will be enough uh, so remember that the anterior posterior diameter will be 11 centimeter uh, oblique diameters will all be 12 centimeter while the transverse diameter will be 13 centimeter in the inlet region only uh, now to know in the uh, cavity as well as in the outlet region just remember this and di uh, this diagram this is very important that is in the uh, at the inlet or at the brim uh, there is uh, anterior diameter and ap diameter will be 11 centimeter oblique diameter 12 centimeter and transverse diameter is th uh, th uh, 13 centimeter 11 12 13 while in the cavity it is uh, since it is uh, round in shape therefore it is 12 12 12 um, but in the outlet there are only anti uh, since it is a diamond shaped outlet so it is also called as the plane of the least pelvic dimension and since it is very much roomy it is called as the plane of the greatest uh, pelvic dimension and here there is no uh, oblique diameter and all so just um, uh, anterior posterior diameter which will be the largest here it will be the shortest diameter here it becomes the largest diameter and here it becomes the shortest diameter which is 11 centimeter then uh, go uh, coming to the next thing that is uh, the uh, measurements from where we will be usually taking uh, the usual places of measurements of the ap diameters will be from the sacrum it will be taken to the pubic symphysis where from the sacrum in case if it is an inlet it will be taken usually from the promontory in case if it is a cavity it will be taken from s2 s3 junction in case if it is an outlet it will be taken from s5 junction uh, so in case of the uh, inlet uh, there are three uh, 
uh, anterior posterior diameter which i have already told that is the two conjugate of static and the diagonal conjugates uh, for that you uh, you have to use the upper borders anterior as well as the posterior uh, margins you need to use in case of the uh, cavity as well as for the outlet you will be using the uh, lower border as the um, uh, uh, as the point okay then coming to the oblique diameters in oblique diameters um, the sacroiliac joint of one side that is uh, over here the sacroiliac joint a sacroiliac joint of one side and uh, the iliopubic eminence of the other side iliopubic eminence this is called as the iliopubic eminence this iliopubic eminence of other side will be used for the measurement and uh, uh, the last one is the transverse diameter it will be the farthest points on the pelvic um, brim over which are lying over the iliopectineal lines they are lying over the iliopectineal line they are lining over the electropectineal line and they are the farthest points of the pelvic brim so this is the way you have to remember all those diagrams uh, as well as the diameters let me tell you an extra point over here that is uh, the anterior posterior diameter uh, of the anatomical outlet of the pelvis will be 11.5 cm while the transverse diameter of this uh, anatomical outlet will be 11 cm. Coming to the smaller concepts that is the waste space of Morris. This waste space of uh, Morris should be always less than 1 cm and it is measured by keeping 3 uh, fingers um, uh, below the pubic symphysis. And the definition of go it goes like this. It is the vertical distance between the symphysis, lower border of the symphysis pubis and a disc placed under the pubic arch which has a diameter of 9.3 cm as shown in the diagram uh, coming to the next one that is the mid pelvis mid pelvis is the plane which lies in between the um, uh, which lies in between uh, the uh, plane of the greatest pelvic dimensions above and um, below it will be the uh, mid pelvic plane uh, then coming to the last thing that is the layers how it gets represented the first one will be the uh, inlet then comes the uh, greatest pelvic plane of the greatest pelvic dimension then comes the mid pelvis then comes the mid pelvic plane then comes the pl uh, plane of the least pelvic dimension then comes the outlet and finally the anatomical outlet uh, then uh, talking about the bispinal diameter the bispinal diameter will be usually uh, 10.5 and the bituberal diameter will also be uh, of the uh, same uh, dimension which will be usually 10 centimeter uh, remember that there are three joints involved in the pelvis the first is the symphysis pubis second is the sacroiliac joint and the sacrococcygeal joint uh, symphysis pubis is a secondary fibrocartilaginous joint and sacroiliac joint is a synovial joint while the sacrococcygeal joint is a synovial hinge joint last concept is about the uh, the curves or the axis uh, the uh, anatomical curve of carus is uh, uh, is the pelvic also called as the pelvic axis which will be going um, backward as well as downwards like this while the obstetric pelvic axis is the axis uh, uh, how the uterus uh, i mean the fetus will be passing through the uh, through uh, in order to uh, reach the outside world uh, through the mater uh, maternal birth passage so this will be uh, this is shown by the di this diagram coming to the last thing that is the obstetric importance of the plane of the pelvic uh, plane of least pelvic dimension it is the narrowest plane of the pelvis this plane corresponds roughly to the origin of the levator ani this is the plane where the correspond it correspond to the levator and eye muscles and it is at this plane and that the internal rotation of the fetal head takes place because it is lying at the level of inter levator and eye where uh, internal rotation takes place as you know it marks the beginning of the forward curve of the uh, pelvic axis also and it is landmark used for pudendal nerve block analgesia also and um, this level of ischial spine indicates the station O and it is irregularly oval and notched on each side by the ischial spines.